We have a train of solar storms that are on their way to Earth and a big flare region that gave us a lot of activity about two weeks ago. Well, it's returning. Those stories and more in the news this week. If you want to learn how weather from our star causes impacts at the Earth that shape the future of our world, join professors Dr. Jenny Meehan, Michael Cook, and myself as we guide you through a space weather certificate program like no other. To enroll in the space weather and environment science program offered at Millersville University, go to millersville.edu slash swen. It's weather for the 21st century. This forecast also sponsored in part by CW Ops. Space weather kicks into high gear this week as we take a look at our Earth-facing disk, look at all the active regions, especially in the east, and believe it or not, there's going to be more regions rotating into Earth view here over the next couple days. But we're really interested in region 3386. Back on the 31st, if you look just south of that region, whoosh, do you see that? That was a filament eruption that is now an Earth-directed solar storm, but believe it or not, that's not the only one. About 12 hours later, if you look northwest of that region, whoosh, there goes another solar storm that's partly Earth-directed. And then on the second, if you wait for it, bam, right there, that is yet another solar storm. And this one is also Earth-directed. So we have literally back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back solar storms and kind of a train coming toward Earth. And we'll talk more about how that's going to affect us in a little bit. Meanwhile, take a look at the east limb. Do you see all the brightness, especially in the south? Well, that is old region 3363. This region about two weeks ago gave us a barrage of big solar flares, a lot of radio noise, and big solar storms that kept grazing Earth. And believe it or not, it survived its far side passage and it's going to be back Earth side here in the next couple days. So expect that solar flux to rise, expect the noise on the radio bands to also rise, and expect radio blackouts are going to be back on the menu. And as we take a look at the sun from the far side, we can no longer use stereo A imagery because stereo's location is now basically viewing the sun from the front side, just like Earth is. So now we go to the JSOC Helio Seismology far-sided viewer and HMI imagery from about two weeks ago to get an idea of what is actually surviving the far side passage in terms of these big active regions. And as we take a look at the helioseismology, you can actually see in the gold regions, look at region 3363. Man, that region is big and dark. It has definitely survived this far side passage, but it's not the only one. We also have regions 3372 and possibly region 3376 from its uh, the last time we saw them. All of these were big flare players when they were on the Earth's facing disk. In fact, as we take a look at the simulated far-sided sun, you can see th region 3363 definitely dominates the region, the, the whole disk, but you can see region 3372. That is a cluster of regions and also 3376. If these regions are gonna be as strong as they were the last time we saw them back two weeks ago, we definitely are in for more than just big flares from region 3363, uh, uh, but also, big flares for probably the next week past that. So definitely expect that solar flux to stay up, expect radio blackouts to stay on the menu easily over the next two weeks, and the potential for more solar storms. Now returning to the train of solar storms that are on their way to Earth, we switch to our solar storm prediction model, Enlil. Now this is NASA's version of the model, and you're looking down at the sun from the North Pole with Earth being off to the right. And as we take a look at that very first solar storm, this was that filament launch, but it also had some extra stuff from the east limb of the sun, which means that the solar storm is quite wide. And at Earth, it's going to end up being a direct hit. NASA is expecting the impact to be early on the 4th, and we could be storming over the course of the day. Now, as we switch to the second solar storm, this was a much smaller solar storm, and it was launched basically to the northwest of Earth. In fact, as we watch it, it's not going to make a very big impact, but there is a small grazing 
incidents that we're going to see at Earth, and this could likely enhance the storming that we're already seeing because the impact is expected to be late on the 4th. So we're going to have two back-to-back -back solar storms, one that's a, a direct hit, one that's kind of a side swipe. But then we go to the third solar storm, and as we take a look at that, this one is much faster, but it is uh, moving mainly to the west, but we are going to get a decent part of that flank hitting Earth. So this one is actually going to hit us early on the 5th, and that's basically when the other one is going to be calming down. So from this perspective, with all three of these storms hitting, we could start storming from basically the or beginning of the 4th all the way in past the 5th, possibly into the 6th before we finally calm down. So Aurora photographers, this is an excellent chance to be able to catch some extended shows and give you lots of opportunities for some very nice views. Switching to our moon, we are now coming out of the full moon phase on our way to a third quarter. And by the 8th, the moon will still be about 49% illuminated. So you night sky watchers, if you want to catch those dim objects in the sky and possibly some aurora, you're going to need to check your local rise and set times because of this bright companion. Switching to our solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are anticipating the hit from that train of solar storms to impact Earth sometime starting around the 4th. So at high latitudes, NOAA is expecting major storm conditions. We have, in fact, we have up to about a 50% chance of a major to a severe storm that's at a G2 level or higher. And the peak should be right around the 5th, although we could get a little storming ahead of that right around the 4th and then that could actually linger into the 6th and possibly the 7th before things really begin to quiet down. So Aurora photographers at high latitudes, you could be in for a decent show all the way through the, this week. Now at mid latitudes, while well, the conditions are still pretty good, we are expecting minor storm conditions, but we have about a 15% chance of major storm conditions. Now again, the peak will be around the 5th. We could start storming a little bit before that. So we have kind of an Aurora watch both on the 4th and on the 6th. But by the 7th, things should definitely be settled down at mid-latitudes. So Aurora photographer, if you're at mid-latitudes, well, you do have a good chance. Expect things right around the 5th and definitely keep your eyes peeled and your batteries charged. Switching to our solar flare and dayside radio blackout outlook over the coming week, we do have a lot of active regions on the Earth-facing disk, including region 3380, which is by far the biggest flare player as of right now. Now, this region is rotating to the sun's west limb, but with all of this activity and new regions rotating into Earth view, we are still sitting in the 160s to the 170s for solar flux, and that is the way it's going to continue. This means good propagation on Earth's day side, but again, we do have the moderate noise level right now, and this is on the radio bands, and this is basically mainly due to region 3380, which is actually growing in complexity as it rotates to the sun's west limb. So we may get some big radio blackouts from it yet before it disappears. NOAA's giving us about a 50 to 55% chance of an R1 to R2 level radio blackout over the next couple days, and even about a 10% chance of X-class flares. And expect these levels to kind of dip down a little bit over the next few days as that region disappears from to the west limb. However, we do have new regions rotating into Earth view, and that may bring that risk right back up. So conditions expect them to restay reasonably the way they are, and amateur radio operators and emergency responders, well, you're just going to have to deal with the noise on the bands. Switching to our radiation storm and polar aviation outlook over the coming week, Everything is all quiet right now. We are sitting at the D1 normal range for you aviators at flight level 360. Now the D index is slightly higher for flights that go over the poles, but we don't have any active radiation storms right now. We are at the S0 level. However, with region 3380 rotating to the sun's west limb and kind of growing in complexity, we do have about a 10% chance of an S1 to S2 radiation storm over the next couple days, and that will drop a little bit more as uh, that region disappears behind the sun's west limb. And then it looks like everything is going to be in the clear easily over this next week before we have to worry about the risk for radiation storms rising again. So the space weather this week has kicked into high gear. We have multiple solar storms that are headed toward Earth, and they could give us some decent aurora show even down into mid-latitude. So aurora photographers, be sure to keep your batteries charged and expect the peak of the storms to be right around the 5th. Now, amateur radio operators and emergency responders, well, you're dealing with a bit of noise on the bands, and sadly, that's going to continue easily over the rest of this week. 
We might get a little bit of a drop off as region 3380 rotates to the sun's far side. However, it's likely going to give us a couple more big solar flares and some radio blackouts before it disappears. Then we also have new regions rotating into Earth view and we'll get a better look at those over the next few days, but likely radio blackouts are going to stay on the menu. And now you GPS users, well, your day side uh, radio blackouts do cause an issue and cause issues for you mainly around dawn and dusk, but now we're also having these solar storms uh, on the night side. So GPS reception over this week is going to be a little bit dicey and so just make sure you stay vigilant anywhere near dawn and dusk and anywhere near aurora on the night side and if you are a uav pilot be sure to calibrate your magnetometers often i'm tam with the scope the space weather woman thank you for watching